Wow. Hey, Merry Christmas to everyone. I don't need that. I do need my hat. I, I was going to have a gazoo, but I had a gazoo, but it broke. So I don't have a gazoo. It's going to play a little gazoo for you. This is the last Sunday that we're meeting on a Sunday for the year. This is it. And I wanted to just say thank you for your generosity to missions this year. We did some incredible stuff in missions. I, I kind of wanted to bring a little report since I, I missed uh, the last Sunday of missions month. But um, because of your monthly commitment for 2022, we were able to give our missionaries $4,260 a piece. Wow. <clears throat> Totaling almost $30,000 from a church our size. Each one of them received approximately $350 a month which is tremendous. And I hope we can maintain that this next year in 2023 or even exceed it. It'd be just amazing if we could do that. We'll bring a report next year as soon as all the, the missions commitment cards get turned in. Be sure and fill them out. And if you, if you normally support missions and you hadn't done it yet, do it. Put it in the black box so we can bring an accurate report and we can let our missionaries know what we're doing for them this year. Now, that's not all we've done for missions. Now, listen to this. We sent over $5,000 to the crisis taking place in Ukraine to some of our missionaries plus some other works that we supported, over $5,000 this year. We also helped send Lisa and, and Jerry uh, to Honduras this year, and we're going to, in fact, give a donation to the ministry they were working with. We're doing that here in the next few days. We gave $1,500 to help put in a water well in Uganda. We did. Now, this is above what we did for our missionaries, okay? We gave $500 to Bestwick, which is a ministry to the orphans in Liberia. We also sent $500 to, to India Gospel Missions, which is a work separate from Red Light Church that we support on a regular basis. We also sent each of our missionaries another $500 just for Christmas, just to bless them and, and their families at Christmas time. All of our extra giving to missions added up to $12,134, which is a grand total of almost $42,000 from our little church body who is so generous towards missions that we gave that amount above or altogether for our missionaries this year in 2022. So I think that's amazing. And I believe this, and I know this, that, that generosity is the key to a successful life. And as a church is, is generous, it's the key to, to a successful church. If a, if, a, if a person is generous, it's the key to success in their life. Proverbs 28, 27 says this, Whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing. But those who close their eyes to poverty will be cursed. Harvest Hill, the reason we don't lack anything, the reason we're blessed, the reason our families are so blessed is because we're generous. We don't lack anything because of our generosity to help the poor and to minister to those in need. And so I just want to say thank you for your support uh, to missions this year, your support to the church. Uh, we're very healthy financially, and uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just blessed. And uh, I'm blessed to be a part of a church so generous. So thank you. Um, let's pray. And I will say that if, if you would like to, to support missions, just fill out a card and, and, and turn it into the black boxes. I, I don't want you to forget to do that because it's important that we let them know uh, what, what we'll be giving them this year. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can gather in your name and we can experience your presence. We can hear your voice. We, be, we can be confident that you're leading us and directing us down the path you would take us. We thank you that we can celebrate your birth this time of year and, and be reminded of how transforming that event was in our own lives, that you were born, that you came to this earth.
Lord, we ask you to, to bless this time. We ask that we would hear your voice clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just says, uh, come on up here, uh, Joseph, and, and share, share that. Joseph came to me during worship with something he felt like we needed to hear, and, and I don't, I don't want to move past what the Spirit may be doing, so get a, get a microphone and come on up. Hello. Yeah, so um, something the Lord, I just want to share my heart with something the Lord's put on my heart this year. And it's oftentimes as we come into the Christmas season, and rightfully so, we think of Jesus Christ being born unto us, a child born unto us, a Savior born unto us. We know Jesus Christ as the man who, who was raised up, who, who did not sin, who bore the sins of the world on himself, who was sacrificed on a cross, who died for mine and your sins. And today we've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. But the Lord just shared something uh, the other day with me. And I just want to share it with you guys. And I just want you to close your eyes for a second. Because we do see this baby, but I want to share with you who this baby was before he was born unto us as Emmanuel. And so I just want you to imagine this world. And I want you to imagine the tallest mountaintops that you can imagine. And on that mountaintop, there's snow and there's, it's beautifully covered with trees and forests running down. And beautiful animals all over the mountaintop. There's a stream that rolls down this mountain into a beautiful lake that's crystal clear, filled with fish and animals and the beauty of creation. I want you to imagine the deepest set of forests that you can imagine. Beautiful, tall trees, beautifully filled with all the animals that come to the forest, frog, rainforest, frogs, all these beautiful, beautiful creation. And I want you to imagine all the beautiful ocean that we have, the beaches that you, so we also love to take vacations to, the white sand and just the beauty of the ocean, the depths of the ocean. And then I want you to look into the sky. It's a pitch black night. And there is stars everywhere. The beauty of the stars, the Milky Way that runs across the sky. I mean, just the beauty of what we can't even see, the planets, all of the vastness of the universe. And then I want to read John 1 to you. Because before Jesus Christ came to us as a baby, this is who he was. Jesus Christ, well, this, this one does not have the books. Jesus Christ was creator. I'm just going to go off, the, off of memory. In John 1, it says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And all that was created was created through the word. And anything that was created was not created unless it was created through the word. Now, Jesus Christ was the word who was sent forth and all that we see in our world and all that we see on earth, the beauty of everything that is created, before he became a child, he was. He was the one who went forth and as the father spoke, as God spoke, it came to existence through the word. And it's just this beautiful picture as, as, as Jesus Christ came and he was born in a manger so as a servant, so humbly. He was put in the womb of a woman that he created. He was brought into the world, and it's this beautiful picture of the creator of all that we know. Everything that you can think of, everything was created through him and for him. And he decided to become a part of his creation. And in John 1.14, it says, and he came and he dwelt among us. And I just don't want to forget that this Christmas season. Yes, we have a Savior who was born unto us, a child. But that child created everything that we know. And there is such a humility in that in itself. So as we come into the Christmas season, think about that. Think about the beauty of all that he created and the fact that he decided to come and tabernacle in the midst of humanity as a child. Amen. 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 Christmas message. 
What is the Christmas message? The message of Christmas. If you're going to narrow it down to the Christmas message, what is the Christmas message? It, it's found in Luke chapter 2. I want to read beginning in verse 4. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. No, I'm reading from the New King James Version, actually. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house of the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the, the days were completed for her to be, for her to be delivered. And she brought forth the, her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born unto, to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. What is the Christmas message? What is the message of, of Christmas? Not the meaning. Not the meaning. The message. What is the message of Christmas from on high? It's not the story of the three wise men, even though we, we read that story in other parts of Scripture, and how, what, a, what a great story that is about bringing the gifts, their gifts to, to Jesus in the manger when he was a child. It's not the shepherds in the field, even though that's a great story of proclamation from the angel of, of, of good tidings of great joy who was born on this day some 2,000 years ago or in this season of what we call Christmas and a Savior's been born. That's the message from the Father. That's the message of the one who left the throne room and came to earth in the form of a child who was raised and did not sin to show us how to live a righteous life who healed the sick, raised the dead, cast out devils, and then suffered a brutal, bloody, violent death on a cross so you and I could be forgiven and stand before the Father, holy and righteous forevermore. Unto you this day, a Savior is born. That's the message of Christmas. That's the message is Christmas. And all the Savior brings with him has been born. Salvation has been born. Forgiveness has been born. Righteousness has been born. Peace has been born. Joy has been born. Right standing with God forevermore has been born. Life in Christ as we live on this earth has been born. Mercy has been born. born. Grace has been born. And eternal life in heaven has been born. When Jesus was born, everything that was, comes with Jesus was born on this earth for you and I. Amen. A Savior has been born. That's the message of Christmas. As wonderful as all the other messages are. That's the message from the throne room. Hmm. On the timeline of God, some 2,000 years ago, to the lost, it's the message of the gospel. Amen, right? To the lost, it's the message of the gospel. To the saved, it's the message for evangelism. To the saved, it's the message for evangelism. To the lost, it's the message of the gospel. This Christmas message should be proclaimed from the rooftops, especially this time of year. 
a Savior is born. A Savior is born. We should be playing Santa Claus, giving this free gift to all those who don't really understand or know what the message of Christmas is. This free gift of salvation, this free gift of grace, this, this free gift of God's mercy. We should be proclaiming it from the rooftops. We should be sharing it with the lost and the backslidden people we know. We should be sharing it around the, the dinner table at Christmas time, around the tree. When the kids gather, we should be sharing this message that a Savior is born to those who have not heard it, to those who may not know it, to those who are lost. It's the message of the gospel to those who are saved. It's a message for evangelism. At every company party, at other, every gathering of lost souls, this message should be on our lips, the Christmas message, the message of Christmas. Mm. Mm. We ought to put on a Santa hat. Hey, cousin. Hey, co-worker. Hey, brother-in-law. Hey, sister-in-law. Hey, boss. Hey, friend. Have you heard the Christmas message? Do you know what the Christmas message is? And often they'll say, oh, oh yeah. Or, uh, I, don't, I don't know. A Savior is born. A, a Savior is born. No other Savior was ever born before. No other Savior will ever be born again. A Savior is born. And because of that, we can be forgiven of our sins. And because of that, we can have eternal life in heaven. And because of that, we can have uh, the abundant life here on earth. And we can have grace and we can have mercy. A Savior is born, cousin. Lost, lost cousin. Lost, lost co-worker. Mark Maniac. Mall monster, a savior's born. That's the message of Christmas. That's what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear today. Hmm. Let me ask you something. Has there ever been in history, in the history of man, better news? <laughs> <laughs> Angel said, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Has there been, ever been any better tidings, better news than a Savior is born? Does it compare to the possible news that the Cowboys may go to the playoff once again? <laughs> Just to possibly lose once again. Is there any better news that you, can, that you could hear, even if it was uh, gasoline being on sale at Walmart for less than $3? I mean, is there any better news you can hear as you gather around the water cooler, as the gossip goes around the office? Is there any better news that you could hear if you're sitting at the dinner table at Christmas time? Is there any better news to be told than a Savior is born? A Savior is born. One who saves us from the penalty of sin is born. One who gives us eternal life is born. Is there any better news? See, I don't think in the history of men there's ever been any better news. And they didn't even have that news up until about 2,000 years ago, and now they got the news ever since. A Savior is born. So does it compare to any of the conversations that may take place around the dinner table at the family reunion or the Christmas parties? Does it even compare? As I said, this message of Christmas, the message of Christmas to the lost is a gospel message, but to the saved, it's a message for evangelism to be shared with the lost. So I want to say something to my saved 
born again, spirit-filled brothers and sisters in the room right now. We have an awesome opportunity this Christmas because of family gatherings to share the message of Christmas. This simple message of Christmas. Hey, a Savior's born. Jerry, a, a, a Savior's born. And we're eating around the table and we've got our lost cousins or, or in-laws and outlaws and they're all gathered around and you say, hey, a Savior's born. It's an awesome opportunity for us. And we don't mean to miss this opportunity at Christmas. We need to share and we need to give hope to people. We need to give joy to people. Hmm. So we all should be playing that Santa Claus role. Hmm. How many of y'all are gathering around family members at Christmas? Just show hand. Okay, most of us. How many are, 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 are about to attend possibly some kind of Christmas gathering out there in the world, a, a Christmas party, a company party, something like that? Okay. Share the message of Christmas. Not the meaning of Christmas, the message of Christmas. Christmas has not just lost its meaning, it's lost its message church family it's lost its message it's gone from a savior's born to what do you want Santa to bring you for Christmas <laughs> it's gone from go tell it on a mountain to Santa baby da, 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 da. we've not just lost the meaning we've lost the message you understand what I'm saying Christmas should be just as evangelistic as Easter, as Resurrection Sunday. That's when the Savior hung on a cross and died for our sins. But he was born on this earth to bring joy and peace and righteousness to men. Too often the church makes it all about the baby in the manger and God makes it all about the Savior of the world. Hey, world, hey, world, a Savior is born. You can be judged innocent of everything you've done wrong because a Savior is born. Saints, you know, we, we understand that in the world's legal system, you're innocent till proven guilty. But in the kingdom of God, you're guilty until proven innocent. And on this day 2,000 years ago, the one who makes us innocent was born. You know, we live in a world where so many people have lost their joy. They have little, if any, hope. And they may put on a big face at Walmart or wherever you shop. And you may, you may, you may see an appearance of joy, an appearance of hope, but they've lost it. And anytime you get to talking to them, you know they've lost it. And we know that without Christ, there is no true hope. And there is no real joy. Lasting, everlasting joy. How many of you were at a time in your life where you had no hope and you had no joy because you had no Jesus? I mean, you know, we could all raise our hand. But Jesus transforms a life from joylessness to joyfulness, from hopelessness to hope for their future. Why? Because a Savior was born. So my point is simple, to you and I, to the saved, the message of Christmas is a message for evangelism. 
So I have a challenge for you. Actually, I don't have the challenge. The Holy Spirit has a challenge for us. And the reason I know this is true, because he challenged me with the same challenge he's about to challenge you with. And then he convicted me of it. And the challenge is this. Here it is. I have it on the big screen. Share the Christmas message at least one time this Christmas season. Share the Christmas message, a Savior is born, at least one time this Christmas season. Not 50 times, not 20 times, just one time. This is the challenge. This is the challenge. <laughs> in conversations with coworkers, and in, in conversations with lost loved ones and, and friends and family, uh, people that you, you know they're, they're, there's this big gap between where they are and where they ought to be with the Lord, you know, and the distance between what is and what ought to be, that gap, you know. And you know them well enough to know there's a gap or you just got introduced to them and you know there's a gap share the christmas message the message of christmas hey a savior's born you know god puts people in our path for a reason god ever put someone in your path and you knew god put that person in your path for a reason anybody raise your hand god put them in your path you know god put them in your path and you knew it was for a reason god's going to put them in your path and the reason is this so you can share the gospel the message of Christmas. Conversation could sound something like this. You're walking through Walmart or you're at the Christmas party and, hey, Merry Christmas. I just love this time of year. Don't you love this time of year? It seems like people are more friendly. You know what I mean, Joseph? They're just more friendly. They're more outgoing. I, I like the, the lights, all the, all the decorations on the houses. Uh, and, and, and I like the Christmas music playing. You know, in the, in the, the malls, they've got the Christmas music playing. They've got the, all the decorations. I just love that. And it reminds me of the message of Christmas. You know what the message of Christmas is? A Savior is born. Do you see how simple that is? So it could sound something like that or it could sound something totally different. You could just be whistling jingle bells. I don't know if I can whistle jingle bells. You could ask a, a lost family member, hey, what, what song am I whistling? I was going to do it on kazoo, but my kazoo broke. And they'll say, well, that's jingle bells. You know, that reminds me of... The, the Christmas message. You know what the Christmas message is? A Savior is born. And because a Savior is born, we can be saved. We can be forgiven. We can have eternal life. A Savior is born. That's it. That's it. You just did it. And you can get as creative as you want to. You can come up with better ideas than that. But that's the challenge from the Holy Spirit for you. And for me. To at some point in time during this Christmas season, share the message of Christmas with someone. With someone. Hmm. <laughs> and he'll put someone, I guarantee you, he'll quicken you uh, who it is and when to, sh when to share it. I promise you, he will quicken you who it is and when to share it. He'll put someone in your path, perhaps someone you know or perhaps someone you don't know, but he'll tell you. And so just put a big Christmas smile on your face. Don't be a Grinch when you're sharing the best news that's ever come <laughs> on this earth. Big smile on your face. Hey, I love Christmas. You know what the message of Christmas is? And they'll, they'll answer often, and, or they won't, well, yeah, 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 a Savior is born. And then just fall in love with what you're saying. Get excited about what you're saying. Don't worry about what happens next. Don't worry about the outcome. Leave that up to the Holy Spirit. You can be sowing seeds. You can be reaping seeds. You can be watering other seeds. But know this, when the Holy Spirit quickens you to do it, I'll tell you this about the Holy Spirit. 
when he quickens you and shows you who and he tells you share the Christmas message, you can be assured that he's gone before you to prepare the way. And you're just entering into conversations he's already been having with those people. I always like to end with a question. I'll say something. Did, did, you, did you know that was the Christmas message? That a Savior is born? And often they'll, they'll reply, oh, yeah, and you kind of locate them. Yeah, I know I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Or they'll just say, yeah, I didn't know that. And you, and you just located them. And you can talk to them about his forgiveness of sins. You can, you can, you can you know, bite the bullet and take it all the way to the end and say, hey, would you like to ask Jesus into your life? And it may not get that far. The challenge is just you share the Christmas message. You leave the results up to the Holy Spirit. See where he takes you. Amen. I, uh, it's kind of funny. And you might not think this challenge is from the Holy Spirit. But it was really confirmed to me. But what happened after... I left church after the Lord downloading this challenge in my heart. But in fact, you'll know it was from the Holy Spirit when it happens to you. You can say, well, pastor was right. It wasn't his challenge. It was the Holy Spirit's challenge because it just happened to me. So this is how you'll know. But it was confirmed to me that it was the Holy Spirit's challenge when I left the church that day. And I'm pulling out into the parking lot and a police officer pulled into the parking lot. I thought it was Ethan Beasley, who's one of the officers that, Midlothian officers that goes to this church. I thought it was Ethan. So I pulled up beside him, had a little bit of a tinted glass. I had a little bit of tinted glass on my truck. So I rolled down the window and the, and the police officer rolled down her window and it wasn't Ethan. And she's looking at me with that stern police look on her face like, what do you need? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh Lord, what do I say? And the Holy Spirit says, share the message of Christmas. So I introduced myself, I'm Pastor Nelson Kaufman. I'm a senior pastor here at Harvest Hill, and I just want to say thank you for your service and uh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> her countenance changed a little bit. I could tell she was new to the force. I'd never seen her before. She's a, a new officer. And, uh, and so I got her name, and I, I said, Officer, I said, called her by name, and I said, do you know what the message of Christmas is? That was her mic going off and her... No. <laughs> I said, has anyone ever shared with you the message of Christmas? I said, you know, it's a Savior is born. A Savior has been born. And with him comes eternal life. And she got this big smile on her face, and I could tell that she was a believer. I could tell that this wasn't new news, but it was news she needed to hear that day. And I didn't take it past that. I just invited her to church. I hope she comes someday. And that's the message. I stepped into the challenge. I've done it since then a few times, sowed a few seeds. But I remember that one because the Holy Spirit said, share the message of Christmas. A Savior is born. And that's the challenge. One time. I'm not going to ask you if you'll take the challenge. I think the Holy Spirit will tell you when to take it. And you'll say, well, that pastor was right. It was from the Holy Ghost. And the worship team to come up here, please. I'm going to finish early today. Merry Christmas. I'm going to finish early today because we're having a little fellowship right after service with hot chocolate and cake. And I want you to maybe get to know someone you don't know. I want you to be able to say, hey, do you, if someone says, hey, do you know so-and-so? And, -so? and they, do you know so-and-so? You'll say, yeah, I know them. I met them. I want you to hang out, eat a piece of cake. It's one of Linda's cakes, fantastic cake. Um, it's just spend some time greeting each other, saying hello, saying Merry Christmas. And maybe you're here today and you, let's just all stand. Maybe you're here today 
and you never have heard the Christmas message that a Savior is born, I want to introduce you to the Savior. And maybe we're all saved here today, but maybe we're not. We like to end our services just simply praising the Lord, entering into that moment of worship, allowing those people who need prayer to come up and receive prayer. We're going to have a prayer team up here. Prayer team, if you're in here, anyone at all, y'all come up here. But if no one's ever introduced you to the Savior, I want to introduce you to the Savior or, or Pastor Joseph or, or any one of our, our prayer team up here this morning can introduce you to the Savior. Just say, I heard the Christmas message and I need the Savior. I need someone to forgive my sins because there are many. I need someone to give me life on this earth and joy and peace. And I need someone to give me eternal life when I go and my life ends. As I said, this season gives us great opportunities, family members and friends and coworkers, to share the message of Jesus. The challenge is to share it at least one time. Father, we thank you that we can be led of your spirit. We thank you that we can be led of your spirit to a lost and dying world. We thank you that you've birthed this message in our heart. A savior is born because we've received you as our savior. And to us who are saved, it's a message of evangelism. pray your blessing upon this congregation. I pray they have the most wonderful Christmas they've ever had. I pray that you make it memorable because you show them the one you would have them share the message of, G of Christmas. Lord, I know it'd be the most memorable Christmas they ever had if they impacted a lost person this way. In Jesus' name, amen.